Hi guys, this is part two of the edit. We're looking at high-end edit of Tower Bridge in London. Part one was where we replaced the sky and we tried to color match as best we could that really nice dark broody sky with the colors on Tower Bridge itself. This part is a little bit more technical. Um, so I thought I'd just take a moment to explain what we're actually doing because we're reflecting what's going on in the water and we're actually gonna try and create a realistic yet artistically pleasing water reflection in Photoshop. So stay with me as I explain how we're going to do that. So the concept of recreating water is actually pretty simple but it is a little bit more technically advanced. That's why I wanted to take a moment just to go over the concepts involved. So when we think about a reflection in water, effectively we're just doing a mirror image of what's above the horizon line. We're reflecting that below. But there's a little bit more to it than that because if it was as simple as just a plain reflection, we could just like a mirror image copy and that would be done. But unfortunately water doesn't quite behave like that. We've got ripples and that's something that a lot of people struggle with in Photoshop. So the technique that we're going to use is actually using displacement maps. Sounds complicated and to be honest it is a little but I'm going to explain how we're, how we're going to do this so that you can do this too and apply this to your images because it is a great technique to add to your tool set because so often, when particularly when you're dealing with landscapes, you might want to improve the reflection of some stunning scene that you've got and the water just doesn't look quite right. So this is what we're going to do. We create a copy, we flip it. That flipped copy, we then apply a displacement map which is going to mimic water and that's actually going to shift the pixels that represent that mirror image copy and remap them in a way that mimics ripples. And the displacement map we are actually going to make by creating a layer that is just a noise filled layer, black and white noise, and then we're going to just shift the channels ever so slightly. So you have your red, green and blue channels. We're going to shift one of the channels up one of the channels sideways and that's all we're going to do with those and then we're going to stretch the whole thing out so we're going to have a strangely mottled effect to our uh, noise map the red green and blue channels and then we're just going to stretch the perspective so that the parts that are coming closer to the camera almost looking as if um, perspective is bringing it in towards the camera those bits are going to be stretched out with a perspective stretch and that will create larger looking ripples in the foreground smaller ripples in the background and then we're going to just blend those in so let's dive into what I've done follow along now you know the concept and thanks for staying with me hope you enjoy this one this is part two part three with the finishing touches to follow so the first thing that I did was actually increase the size of my canvas because I was very aware that if we were going to go to all this effort of reworking the water then I didn't want just that tiny little sliver. So I increased the canvas size and the first thing we want to really do is actually just flip that copied top half of the canvas and you always do that about the horizon line. Now one of the problems that I had with this particular image was that the horizon, yes the horizon was um, absolutely straight but because of the perspective of the bridge coming towards us um, the actual pillars that go into the water they're actually slightly deeper down than the horizon line itself and so just a basic flip, mirror flip of that image wasn't going to be enough um, in this instance so what I decided to do was actually mask out the bridge itself, the water, and then what I was going to do and what I've done is actually shift down the different components of the reflection. Sounds complicated, but it's basically splitting the reflection into four parts. Um, one for the left hand side of the image, two central points for the different um, the different pillars just because they're at those different heights um, coming further down. As you can see here in this particular part, um, the horizon line is up higher, 
than that supporting pillar going into the water. So any work I want to do on a reflection, I want to actually have a realistic reflection in the first place, a re realistic mirror image. So here you'll actually see how I start to move that left hand side. So that's a perfect reflection as if it was um, a piece of ice or um, a mirror in the water. And then I shift down the next part and I'm just going to blend these two together um, just really simply using a mask and you'll see here I make a little bit of a mistake there's still a little bit of that brickwork left in that reflection but I really don't care because we're going to be playing with reflections um, and actually putting a displacement map which is going to try to mimic reflections uh, we're actually going to be manipulating that reflection anyway so we don't need to be perfect here um, here you'll see I'll just use the pen tool to create a pen selection and then we can just control click on that in the paths palette and that will load that as a selection and I can just paint out with a nice soft brush and blend those two sections of the reflection in as well what we're doing here is we're, we're just literally working towards getting ourselves a nice base image of a reflection that we can start to actually apply the filters which are going to make it actually look more realistic because at the moment we've basically put a mirror underneath the bridge which uh, yeah, that looks nice and pretty but uh, it's not water so that's where we're heading towards at the moment and once we've done that then we can start looking at using our displacement map to actually create those ripples so as I turn that on and off you'll see that we have created quite a nice uh, starting point for our reflection but believability is the aim of the game with this whilst keeping to an artistic aesthetic so the two have to play together so what I've done here I've actually created an a stamp duplicate layer of the whole um, the whole project itself um, and converted that to 8 bits so that it's just a little lighter when I'm applying these filters uh, the processor doesn't have to work quite as hard and you may or may not know but if in 8 bits when you work in 8 bits on your Photoshop images all the filters are available sometimes in 16 bits they are not so here what I'm doing is I'm actually creating our displacement map which is going to create the ripples so all I've done is create a noise layer with Gaussian noise black and white 400% like slider cranked all the way and I'm just going into the individual channels you'll see the channel palette active and I'm currently on the green channel and I'm just using the emboss filter and I'm shifting this one 90 degrees, I've shifted the red one um, 0 degrees, so they're moved in different directions, and now we have uh, what we need to, to use to actually create a displacement map. Now I'm going to stretch out the corners, the bottom left, bottom right, using a perspective distortion, and I'm going to zoom all the way out as far as I can until it's just a little dot on the horizon and I just keep stretching those as far as I possibly can um, so that the uh, displacement in the foreground as you'll see here it looks as if we have some sense of distance going on a foreground tapering off into the background um, I duplicate this layer and I actually give it another stretch just to take that a step further and it's almost looking like some kind of psychedelic uh, reflections at the moment as it is. But literally all we're doing is creating a displacement map. Now if you try saving it straight out like I just did then, uh, Photoshop's going to have a hissy fit because that file is actually huge. And the reason it's thinking it's so huge is because not only is it saving the data that you see on the canvas in front of you it also wants to save what you stretched out left and right so we don't care about that so you just copy and paste that into a new document save that document and you're good to go now here this is the fun part we've actually started applying that displacement map so what we do we go blur uh, sorry distort displace 
and using the horizontal and vertical scale. The vertical scale is the, the key you want to play with here. Nice high number, something like 100. Select that displacement map we just created and saved. Locate that on your hard drive like I'm doing here. Apply it and Photoshop will actually start to create a rippled effect for you. Is that cool or what? I, I just love that. Um, and here what I'm doing is actually just, I just blur, blur it with a motion blur again, just to give the water a little bit more softness. And then I go again, I'm just uh, reapplying that displacement map over and over again. You can just do it once. If you put in your horizontal, your vertical scale and you're at a point where you are happy with the result you get, you're done. Um, but I didn't feel I was quite happy with what I, I got, so I actually reapplied that filter several times. Um, and what I decided to do was where I created a larger number with more displacement, um, I actually had that closer to the foreground, like lower down in the image, so that the ripples are actually bigger, closer to the camera, and they recede into minimal ripples that you can hardly see off in the distance. So I think one of the big take homes from this is that it takes a little bit of work to get these reflections looking believable, um, but it is much quicker than how I've actually arrived at it here. I just feel like I didn't really um, put in the correct values. I really had to play around with it to, to get to a place where I felt happy. Um, so what I would recommend you doing is actually copying the reflection itself that you create to its own new layer and from there, you can actually just be more proactive with changing the numbers, changing the values to see what value you like. In this particular part here, I'm actually using the Path Blur filter, which is a fantastic tool uh, for creating a, a kind of blur, a uh, kind of reflection effect but it has no ripples. So I thought this would be a great starting place since I hadn't quite hit the nail on the head in terms of the ripples that I liked at this point. I would use the path blur, um, which allows me to control how much blur there is at each end of the, the blur path. So you can have more blur further away, uh, more blur closer to the camera in the foreground and less as it uh, disappears into the horizon. Um, and then using this layer, I then I'm going to apply my displacement map. So here we are copying it to a new layer using a high value like 200. And now all of a sudden I've created some reflections that I'm much, much more happy, happy with. I feel they look much more believable. And now by using those reflections with a combination of just some of the reflections I used before. So now I'm using... Um, a little bit of layering of different valued reflections, displacement maps with different values, I feel like we've actually got something that's a little more believable. And after all, we're, we are trying to err on the side of believability so that people don't question whether it is a genuine reflection or not, but we want still to give our viewer that aesthetically pleasing look we want it to be artistic, not like the original River Thames that was there with all that choppy water and it just, it didn't look that artistic or anything like that, it just looked meh. So now I think we're heading in the right direction, which is great. Now, the next step for me is just to darken down that water. Water isn't as bright as the thing it's reflecting, so I've just created a curves layer where I've darkened it down, used that same mask that I had before for the water, so I'm reusing that mask and just darkening that down. Um, and once I've done that, I just thought, oh, I'll just brighten back up the reflection of the tower itself, and I think we're in a pretty good place with the reflection at the moment. The one thing I did want to do just finally was just, I felt like we'd created a little bit too much water. Um, we don't need quite as much of that in the composition, so I'm actually going to crop in just a little tighter on the bridge itself. Um, so now we have that lovely water we created, but still the main focus is the bridge rather than 
a bit of a half and half bridge and water. So now I'm just darkening down, I'm really being diving in deep here, darkening down those bright highlights in the background. And guys, that's pretty much it for my reflection. Um, I really look forward for you to join me in the next section where we can put those finishing touches on that image. Thanks so much for following along there guys. Hope you enjoyed that. That's part two of three. Part three is gonna be much more exciting. We're gonna look at finishing touches and that's when your re image really comes to life and you can really stamp your personal look on your photo. So come with me to part three and let's see what I did to this one. Cheers guys. <laughs>